You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's Behave with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces, their perfectly pampered pets, and who's walking who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the All Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Choo-choo! My favorite train is coming down the track. But this is no ordinary train. And the passengers are, well, probably best described as passengers. Helping this train stay on track to rescue thousands of shelter animals are my two special guests. So I want you to give pause and applause to, first, Lisa Young. She's the director of the Rescue Train and the mastermind behind this fourth annual Race for the Rescue fundraiser that's being set up for October 4th at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. And please welcome Albert Reed, an actor, professional model, who sends tails and tongues a-wagging for his performance a couple years ago you might have seen on Dancing with the Stars. Plus, he looks great when modeling clothing from Albert Crombie and Fitch and more. So I want to give you both a chance to say hi. Uh, Lisa, Albert, thank you for being on the OBH show. Arden, thank Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Yeah, my train impression is excellent. I'm sure I'm going to probably win. You know, America's got talent with that one. But They're very entertaining. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. It's called OBH. (laughs) Well, we're going to be back with Lisa and Albert right after we pay for this show by taking this commercial break. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. It's time for school for you and your friends, your furry best friends. Train your dog the fun and easy way with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Teacher's Pet host Pia Silvani teaches you step-by-step how to train your dog the fun and easy way. You get eight 30-minute live audio training sessions, complete transcripts of each session, plus a basic training manual to get you and your dog off to a great start. Training begins the moment you bring your dog home. Teacher's Pet Sessions offers positive reinforcement training to shape your dog's behavior and encourages upbeat, enthusiastic responses to ensure that your dog will enjoy learning. Teacher's Pet Sessions dog training is fun at both ends of the leash. So listen, learn, and laugh with your dog with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Get your copy of Teacher's Pet Sessions Volume 1 today. To order, go to TeachersPetSessions.com. Hi, this is Pia Salvani, your host. Bring your dog, tug toy, and treats, and get ready to have some fun. TeachersPetSessions.com. Pet Life Radio presents Paranormal Pets, where you can always expect the unexpected. Each week we'll discuss all aspects of weird or spiritual animal encounters, ghosts, totems, psychic animals, animal souls, animal angels, and animals in religion, with a little cryptozoology thrown in. Step into the supernatural world of pets with your Paranormal Pets ghostly host, Dusty Rainbolt, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. Hey, it's Katie Mandakeen from ABC Family's Ruby and the Rocket. And I'm sitting here with my amazing, sloppy, crazy dog, Georgie. And we want to invite you to listen to Oh Behave with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. Rock on, baby. Oh Behave is back with more tail wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. 
Welcome back to the OBHAVE show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Wow. You know what? This show features not one, but two great guests. Today, they are teaming up to ensure that the fourth annual Race for the Rescue fundraiser is set for October 4th at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, will be a huge success for animals in need. Now, ladies first, uh, Lisa Young is the director of the Rescue Train and in charge of this year's event that will benefit seven, count them, seven nonprofit rescue groups. Animal lover uh, Carrie Ann Anaba, who is the Dancing with the Stars, one of the judges, will serve as host for this year's event, and she's being ably assisted by two handsome co-hosts, actor model Albert Reed, who's on our show right now, and actor Sean Kanan, who stars on the daytime's top drama, The Young and the Restless. There's tons of other people who are giving their time and their energy to ensure that shelter pets all over land permanent loving homes. So I'm just jazzed that you both can be on the show. And Lisa, ladies first, let's give a little more background about yourself and uh, and how people can learn more about the Race for the Rescues. Thank you, Arden. I'm so excited to be here today and have the opportunity to tell everybody about the event. This is our fourth annual event out at the Rose Bowl, and it's a day where all ages of animal lovers come out and walk, run, shop, mm-hmm. or adopt to help <laughs> shelter animal. And, and I don't know if you've heard recently, but we've had fires again here in California, and so yes. many of our city shelters are even more full than they normally are. So the shelter animals that are coming out that day, we're doing our best to make sure that every single animal gets a home. And for the last three years, we have sent all the shelter trucks back empty. So that's, once again, our goal. Wow, that is impressive. (laughs) There's just, you know, we have a huge pet overpopulation crisis here in Los Angeles, sadly. And there are so many highly adoptable pets, dogs and cats, waiting at our city shelters for love. And Race for the Rescue is a day when we just celebrate life and celebrate the unconditional love that they bring to us. And it's it's a lot of fun. We've got face painting for the kids. We've got the L.A. Lakers cheerleaders at the finish line. We've got Albert <laughs> and Terry Ann. We do a, an adoption show where we bring the shelter dogs up in costume to music <laughs> and showcase them to the audience. And, of course, we have the 5K walk run and kids fun run. So it's a great day. It's oh, every- it sounds like I mean, I can't wait to see some <laughs> chihuahuas doing the cha-cha with some great Danes. That I wonder who leads. <laughs> We have, one thing I have to mention, because people aren't an athlete or they're not looking to adopt that day, our presenting sponsor is Electrolux, and we have an amazing silent auction. I mean, the silent auction is off the hook. We've got all these appliances they gave us, washers and dryers, TVs. We've got meet and greets with Conan O'Brien, Dr. Phil. We've got trips, a trip to Nassau, a trip to NASCAR, a hot air balloon ride, and the auction is incredible, so... That's another reason for people to come out. And, um, now, you, you talk about the silent auction. I think people are anything but silent when it comes to Albert. Albert, you are money, <laughs> yes. baby. I mean, <laughs> wow. I'm just, letting, um, I'm just letting Lisa talk. I, I'm, I'm just you know, letting her. <laughs> no, letting her do it you all can't just there. be the handsome hunk. you got something to say. I mean, what's your connection with pets, Albert? Well, you know, um, the reason why I decided to do this, uh, I had a certain friend come up and ask me to, you know, to host it with him. And, uh, First off, I know Carrie Ann pretty well because you know, I, I did the show with her uh, a few seasons back. And then I, I had a dog that I rescued from the North County L.A. shelter about five years ago. Oh, okay. And uh, I took him in, and he's, you know, he's been a fantastic part of my life, but he, he passed away about four months ago from kidney failure. His name was Kai. He was actually, if you, were, you, know, if you, if you kept up with Dancing with Stars in the season I was on it, uh, they actually they had him as a special guest for a couple of the videos on it. So... But, you know, losing him, and, and I just think it's really important. You know, a lot, I know a lot of people go out and they, you know, they, they buy dogs from breeders, and I just think it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, huge, it's a huge thing to go out and, and rescue a dog and give a dog a home versus, you know, going out to buy one. You know, there's, there's so many dogs that are euthanized and, you know, put down every year. And uh, I don't know, I, I've been adopting dogs since I was a kid. You know, my, my parents always, you know, we always went to shelters and got dogs, and it was just, it's just been a, part, a way of life for us, so... Well, it's you pick a great name. To support it. Yeah, Kai. Yeah, that, means, that means ocean for everybody. His background, the dude was born probably with a surfboard in your arms, weren't you? You had surfboard and diapers, right? That's kind of what your story was in Miami? Well, I, I grew up with a, a mother who uh, 
a bit of a hippie of, her, of herself, so we, we spent a lot of time <laughs> at the ocean, just to say the least. <laughs> well, that's good. So that's a beautiful name for your dog. And, you know, being on Dancing with the Stars, whether you become the ultimate winner or not, that's pretty nerve-wracking. I guess, like, what, 25 million people were checking you out doing the cha-cha? Yeah, I, I never really... Um, uh, it's funny. Everyone always says oh, it must have been really difficult to jump up there, but you know, it was. Uh, you're, you're so you're so prepared. You go over uh, you know the routine so many times that it, you honestly didn't even think about it when you're out there. So it, it's. Uh, I'd have to say it's more it's more nerve wracking. Um, you know, coming out into L.A. and and auditioning in front of all of their producers. Of- all in right. In front of 25 million people. So. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll have to have way. that problem one day. I'll, I'm, but I don't think anybody wants to see me dance. My dogs laugh at me. I'm so discoordinated when it comes to well, who playing knows, you, music. You might be good at the cha-cha-cha. You know, <laughs> we'll have to check it out, Albert. I definitely would like to do that. Lisa, I know uh, in your background, too, I mean, the Rescue Train, that's an apt name for your organization. And it sounds like you've realized that one way to do good is to get good, strong educational messages out there. And uh, so your train keeps loading up new uh, cars on its track to help animals. We have so many wonderful volunteers. And because we are based in Hollywood, you know, we, we have a group of people that have the ability to get the word out. People like Albert and Carrie Ann, and we're so grateful to them. The average American doesn't really, really know what goes on in city shelters across our country. I... When I first stepped foot in a shelter here in L.A., I'm originally from Massachusetts, I was shocked. I just had no idea that hundreds of animals were being euthanized each week because we don't have enough homes. Right. And I was like, where is everybody? You know, why, why aren't people down here doing something about this? So I became that person down at the shelter trying to get the word out to other animal lovers about what's going on. But the reality is that we have too many pets and not enough homes. And the solution is renewing our pets because we can't have our shelters full and more animals being born just to die because there's no place for them to go. So that, that is one of the things that my group really focuses on is getting the message of spaying and neutering out to the public and low cost, free spaying and neutering in our mm-hmm. area. And I know there's certainly in every city resources for that, but we just encourage people you know, for that reason, also for the health of your pet. Yeah, right. You know, when I first got my dog, that to neuter a pet, I mean, spay or neuter is, you know, your pet's eight times less likely to get cancer, testicular mam- mammary cancer. So that's another good reason, if you love your animal, to spay and neuter your pet. What type of uh, pets do you have now, Lisa? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, it's only a half hour or so now. I don't know. Well, I'll ask you uh, that I'm question. <laughs> Now, Albert, you might be adopting some more pets. I think there's a train coming your way. That's not a problem. I, I, I'm, I'm looking for a new dog, so. Okay. Okay, well, good. We know where Albert might be able to find one on October 4th. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard about Cowboy. We have a puppy named Cowboy that we just okay. rescued, um, and he's got Albert's name all over him. He's this beautiful eight-month German Shepherd that was found tied to a pole by a chain in do- uh, downtown Los Angeles. Oh my a couple gosh. weeks ago, and we went and we got him. He'd been out there all day in the sun, mm. and he's just this amazing dog. And he, the rescue train has a program called Train for Life, where we actually obedience train our rescue dogs before they go home. That is very smart. It's an excellent Huge. program, yeah. And Cowboy's just finishing school. Uh, he's just getting out of his obedience training right before the race, so the race will be his first day out, and he'll be up for adoption. And he can uh, be seen on our website. He's just, he's to die for. <laughs> it's so cute. I can just see you two in a photo shoot for one of your major magazines or clothing lines. That <laughs> you're like, cowboy, strike the pose. Uh, I, try, I try to only exploit myself, not, not my dog. <laughs> I know, but I wonder, you know, he's going to win some uh, fans too, you know. He might have some canine charm to compete with you. Yeah, it, it's really amazing what Lisa does over there. I, I was, you know, reading up on her, and um, mm-hmm. you know, not to just rescue the dogs, but to even, you know, to train them. You know, the obedience train them, which is, you know, it's a lot of work. And but it's really amazing. And the amount the, the shelters that, that she works with, and you know, the passion she has for it, it leaves me speechless. That, you know, the amount of the amount of work that they put into it. So yeah, uh, Lisa, you want to give a shout out to your trainer? We have an amazing trainer named Julie Isles who works up at Lockwood Canine. Uh, at her beautiful facility on State Forest. And she, she trains government dogs, search and rescue dogs. She's been working with the rescue team for six years. She's definitely one of our big heroes. She'll take a 
shelter dogs that have treatable behavioral issues that the average pet owner might not know. And she'll take these dogs and work with the new adoptive owners and uh, her, her, I'm, you know, sure these dogs might not get adopted. She's really a rare hero. Um, every dog that gets trained in our program, Julie actually goes home with the dog and trains the new pet owner what the dog has learned. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> wow. With the fact that Julie also comes to the home to help make sure that the people know what they're doing when it comes to good doggy manners, it's nice to know if Cowboy's the one, Albert, or there's another dog in your life. Isn't that kind of nice? That's something you don't always see when you adopt a dog or a cat, yeah, is this door-to-door nice service. That not only do they train the animals, they train the owners themselves. So, yep. Which, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how many you know how many dogs are turned into city shelters because of lack of basic obedience, and yeah. by people just learning you know a little bit of how to manage dog behavior, they could stay in their home. So it's another part of educating pet owners um, how to deal with having an animal and living with I, an animal. I agree. Really, it's, yeah. it's a shame people don't as soon as it gets too hard for them, they just give them up because they know I've went through puppies and which is. A nightmare at some points, but <laughs> I mean, with I, I, the way I look at it is, you know, animals just, they bring so much joy to your life, like so much more joy than it would be, you know, in a negative. So I think everyone should go adopt a dog, you know, all of LA, right now. 15 million of us. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget the kitties because some cats are pretty darn cool. And, and kitties too and, you know, ferrets, whatever. I mean, the whole <laughs> nine. If we can get people just to teach a dog to watch me and to sit, and to leave it, you've actually solved a lot of your problems because you've got the dog's attention, they're in the parked position, and they're not getting something in their mouth that they shouldn't. So that can solve a lot of problems. So I'm really happy to hear that the rescue train does that added uh, service because I was checking out some statistics, Albert and Lisa, and I was kind of dismayed to hear that about every nine seconds in this country, a dog or a cat has to be uh, euthanized at a shelter just because there's no room, there's nobody to adopt yeah. them. That's pretty chilling. Yeah, that's really sad. I mean, you know, my dog, technically his deadline was um, within the three days before I found him, he was supposed to be euthanized. Wow. And, uh, so that was, um, I, was like, how can, I was like, how could you kill this beautiful dog? You know, I mean, he, he was malnutritioned and, you know, he didn't look good, but he was this beautiful, sweet dog. And you could see in his eyes, you know, when he's looking at me, he was like, please, just get me out of here. (laughs) This is Kai speaking of? Yeah. Yeah, it's a really really sad statistic if that's the case of every nine seconds, you know. The hardest part of my job at the rescue train is we pull animals determined by funding. We board the majority of our animals. We have vet bills. We have training bills. So funds do dictate how many lives we get to save. The rescue train is adoption partners with the city of Los Angeles, so we get the euthanasia list. You know, I have to pick who gets to live, and it's uh, very, very, been doing it for nine years, and it's still very emotional for me uh, every time. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Well, I, I remember the ones that I don't pick, you know, more than I, their faces, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. You know, it, ha- it haunts you, and I, I wish we could save every single one, and I know there's so many rescue groups. That's why the race is so great, because we're supporting seven groups, and there's so many groups out there working so hard and it's still such a big problem so we well, need let's, the public let's please uh, remind the people the website it's called it's right. raceforderescues.org okay R-A- and your particular website is also called the rescue train.org the rescue train like a choo choo train yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, choo 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 there it is so there's a, there's a, there you go I told you you shouldn't have unleashed me darn it go ahead and uh, run down the, the non-profit rescue groups that are going to be benefiting from this event on October 4th sure uh, Best Friends Animal Society Stray mm-hmm. Cat Alliance Molly's Mutts and Meows Get Friends Foundation A Dog's Life Rescue and the Rescue Train and then our two city shelters are the Pasadena Humane Society and SPCA and LA Animal Services. And the, the animals that are coming out, they have a mm-hmm. few days. If they don't get adopted at the event, they go back and they get scheduled to be euthanized within a few days. So it's really important to us that the, those shelter trucks, all the animals get off. And the rescue train will usually take as many of the leftovers as, as we 
he can fit <laughs> on the train. Okay. So, um, <laughs> that sounds good. We're speaking with Lisa Young. She's the director of the Rescue Train and actor professional model Albert Reed. Right after this commercial break, so sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Give your dog some thought with Dog Thoughts. It's the iPhone application that everyone's talking about. Hey, what do you think of this? A man in Davis, California says he's invented an application for the iPhone that claims it can read your dog's mind. Huh? No, it's true. I read about it on my cat's Twitter page. That's why. Jay Leno talked about it, CBS reported on it, and now you can see what all the buzz is about. Created just for dog lovers, Dog Thoughts makes taking photos of your furry best friend more fun. Shake your dog and read his mind. <gasps> on your iPhone, of course. Take a pic of your pup, shake your phone, and watch as his thoughts appear on the screen. Does he have a bone to pick with you, or is he having a tail-wagging day? Get your Dog Thoughts iPhone app today. Just 99 cents. Go to PetLifeRadioPromotions.com. That's PetLifeRadioPromotions.com. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in paparazzi, candid pictures of you and your pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No. To my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. When you're looking to add a pet into your life, consider adopting a homeless animal from your local shelter or rescue group. Whether you want a kitten, puppy, or a more mature pet, a purebred or a one-of-a-kind mixed breed, even a rabbit or hamster, your shelter has the best selection of animals anywhere, all screened for good health and behavior. PetLifeRadio.com presents Take Me Home with your host, Susan Daffron. Join us each week as we showcase wonderful pets, tell stories, and even throw some pet education into the mix. So get ready to find out why the pet adoption option can be a great way to add a furry companion into your life. Take me home every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hey everybody, I'm Rachel Ray. You're listening to OB Hayes with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to OB Hayes. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the OB Hayes Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. We have our very special guest today, Lisa Young. She's the director of the Rescue Train, and I'm very happy to have actor and professional model Albert Reed, who is a diehard pet loving guy who is looking to adopt a dog. So he's timing is everything, right, Lisa? The you know with the race for the rescue coming up October fourth, good timing. Well, we'll see. You know, I think when people choose an animal, uh, hopefully they're considering that it's you know it could be a ten to fifteen year commitment and and. You have to connect with that right one. So we're hoping, That's Albert. Right. <laughs> yes. yeah, it's it, it got to be right for Albert. Definitely, so. <laughs> definitely a connection process. It took me about three weeks to get my last dog who passed away recently. So I, um, yeah. 
has to fit right. I think you made a good point, Lisa, that it is a long commitment, probably longer than most uh, roles on television these days. So you've got to pick a pet knowing that maybe a, one that will be in your acting career for three or four shows. Right, Albert? <laughs> That's true. That's right. That's right. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the fun things that are going to happen on October 4th. I guess the L.A. Uh, Lakers cheerleaders are going to swing by. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring out how some cool of the is, fun things. I, how cool is that? The L.A. Lakers cheerleaders. are Not they're bad. Gonna, they're going to warm up the, the racers. Okay. Um, people come out, and we have, we have from anywhere from serious athletes running to people that just want to walk. Um, people go with or without their dog. We've got all kinds of uh, competitors out there. But the L.A. Laker cheerleaders are going to warm up the racers, and uh, Sean Kanan is going to start the race for us. And let's and everybody remind who Sean is. He's that dream Sean is an actor devil on that show. He's the devil on The Young and the devil. Restless. He's being mean to Amber. <laughs> well, in real His life, character, not him. Not him. <laughs> Yeah, he plays a pretty someone's, good hey, villain. Someone's got to play that part, so. That's right. And usually the nicest guys play those parts. You notice he is that? He's a very nice guy. It's true. He is. Yeah. Okay, so we're not dissing him, honest, Sean. We're not dissing him. In fact, my right. eight, five year old neighbor, Flo, has been watching The Young and the Restless since 1962. And I told her that he's being part of this race for the rescues event. And she said, He's such a villain, but he's so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got a fan and flow. That long. <laughs> yeah. So the race is a 5K run walk. So if you you know don't want to run really fast and you only have two legs and not four, you can actually do the walk part of it if you'd like. Correct. You can walk. Um, we also have a kids fun run, but it's also nice. open to the, it's open to the public. We have an expo area. We have shopping. We have unique pet products. We have kids uh, face painting. We're at, yeah, we're but, having yeah. an exhibit, a mm. demonstration called Dancing with the Dogs, and we have. Oh these dancers that actually dance with their dogs. So that's in Carrie Ann and Albert's honor. <laughs> Albert, yeah, are you really, going to give it a try? Pretty fun to well, watch. Well, yeah, we, we get to host the Dancing with the Dogs spot of it, so it's pretty exciting. And I, I watched a video uh, from last year's, and it was quite entertaining to see these little dogs all dressed up in outfits. So Yeah, they yeah. really do choreograph them with their dogs. I mean, there's a whole dog sport, if you will. It's It's called canine musical... Whatever. I mean, it's amazing that people will dress up in outfits with their dogs and they have to time their dance steps with their tail waggers. That's what this is. It's put on by the four, Four-Legged Friends Foundation. And it's the first time we're having this particular part of the event where they're, they're going to do a couple routines, which will lead into the rocking adoption show, which was where mm-hmm. Albert and Terry Ann will be bringing shelter dogs up. And yes, we bring them up in costume. It's almost mm-hmm. Halloween. That's right. No, it's Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. Uh-huh. Bad, and, bad, bad pun. You know, we kind of take the sadness of their shelter dog status and put them in costumes to music, and the kids love it. And we actually get a lot of the dogs adopted that way. It's fun. This day is about celebrating life and celebrating our love of animals. Um, so. It's always heart melting to be a dog dressed up. So. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. I think so, too. I think they should model with you, don't you think, Albert? <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally. totally. You could give them some modeling. One of their crazy outfits. I'm totally down for that. Is there any modeling uh, tips you could give our four-legged listeners out there on how to strike the pose the right way? You get to circumvent stage fright. Okay. Okay. So, so with whatever means, maybe doggy bones, a couple walks around the block prior to shooting. I don't know. Something along okay, those lines. Okay, just get... Uh, no, all right. no tinkling on the stage. <laughs> yeah. No tinkling on the stage. Very important. No barking. It happens. <laughs> okay. Now, there's also this walk-a-pause celebrity mm-hmm. art auction, and you have, have had in the past some pretty big names... Uh, who have shown off their um, artistic talents to help raise money for this event. Yeah, it's fun. It's An artist designs these canvases, and we have celebrities put their hand prints and their animals' paw prints on the canvas. We've had, over the years, we've had so many people do it. We have Charlize Theron, Jennifer Aniston. Did Jennifer do it with her dog, Norman? I believe so. I believe yeah. it was Norman, yeah. Yeah, because I met her um, so. when we did, a, we did a show on the Marley uh, movie, and uh, I actually knew the real Marley in real life because I worked at the Sun Sentinel with John Grogan. But she's got a corgi mix named Norman, so uh, I think that's very sweet. Oh, yeah, we, definitely. Drew, we had Drew Barrymore. And so it's wonderful when all these people reach out to help and um, take the time to help because the animals need all the help they can get. <laughs> they really okay. Right 
So. And talk a little bit about your uh, top dog host, Carrie Ann, because I think a lot of people know her, but I want to let people know she's also part of this. Carrie Ann, huge animal it. lover, just to throw yeah. that in there. Okay, Albert, because you know her, yeah, Dancing with the Stars. So let's talk a little bit about her. That was that was the one common ground that we shared right off the bat when we did the show together was uh, the Mm -hmm. fact that we were huge animal lovers. So just to throw that one in before Lisa kicks up. No, no, no. You you know her definitely. No, no. Well, I I I, you know I don't spend a lot of time with her as as much as we did when we were on the show, but you know I just know she's um she's definitely got a soft part for uh, for animals. So. Carrie Ann came out and she hosted the event last year for the first time, and we just mm-hmm. enjoyed having her so much. She, she is. She just she loves the animals and the fact that she's taking time. You know, she just came off the Emmys red carpet hosting and then the premiere of the show, and her schedule is crazy. But she, you know, she's making this a priority, and we we just are so grateful to her for that. And the audience loves her. Um, she's. She's so fun and obviously beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So she's just uh, got the beauty on the inside and the beauty on the outside, that Carrie Ann. So we're just so happy to have her. And she'll be bringing the dogs out on stage and talking about them as Will Albert. We have, we have some descriptions of each shelter animal, and, and it really gets the audience interacting, and it's a fun show. And like I said, it's the rock and adoption because we play music. and. They oh, walk cool! The catwalk. <laughs> so, the catwalk for the dogs and the cats. The Are you bringing out any cats out there, or how are you going to yeah, show cats? You know, we we have Stray Cat Alliance. We have plenty of cats up for adoption that day. But I think a phone the, call. The, I'll tell you a funny story. The catwalk on the catwalk. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We don't have the cats on the catwalk <laughs> because we're out in an open field and it's just not safe. But I did. I was on the phone uh, with a lady that called the other day, and she wanted to know if she could do the five k with her cat. <laughs> Oh my and gosh! I was a little bit surprised. <laughs> I said, apparently she hikes and things with her cat and her harness. Um, Are you sure this isn't a puma? <laughs> no, I think it's right her there. cat. I had to <laughs> nicely explain okay. that we have a lot of dogs out there, and it might not be the safest place for her kitty. It's a record for set for that race. If you have that cat leading the way, and the dogs see the cat, yeah, we then don't want have that. Probably but... some new record times for the race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. My two cats are holding their ears saying, we're not going and we're not running in that race right now. We're telling you. I have two dogs and two cats and I call them my furry fab four and um, I've trained my dogs that cats are gods. So they work really well together. But uh, I think they're going to um, cheer on from the sidelines if they can. If people for some reason are not able to get down to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena on October 4th, are there some things they can do before or after the event to help out this cause, Lisa? Well, as I mentioned before, the funds raised this day dictate how many lives we save, you know, for the mm-hmm. months to come. So the race site, the event site, is open all year round. So if, you know, somebody can't come out, they can make an, a, a donation online, and that's racefortherescues.org, that, you know, be there in spirit. Because of sponsors like Electrolux, you know, all the event fees are paid, so all the donations go directly to the animals, and that's great. We thank our sponsors. Without them, none of us would be out there. So we've got Petco, we've got Eye Care for Animals, Animal Specialty Group, Jackson Bones. All these sponsors pay for the event so that the racers are raising money for the homeless animals. Well, I think it's a great cause. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Albert, about this event or just about getting together with the Rescue Trains group? Well, I'm just, um, like I said before, just really excited to be a part of the um, the, I'm honored that they even invited me to, to jump on board in the ship. So I think Lisa holds most of the keys of information for, um, you know, how everything runs smoothly over there. So, but yeah, I'm just, just excited so to be here, Lisa. We're so <laughs> grateful to have you, Albert. You know, your love of animals uh, shines and for you to be a voice, because as we all know, they can't speak. So every one of us that can speak for them helps our cause. But thank you. <laughs> yeah. Albert, what's up for you next? I mean, we see you in uh, the pages of Fine Magazines, Modeling Clothes, and we see you on different TV roles and, and Dancing with the Stars and all. Is there anything you'd like to share what's coming up? Any upcoming projects we can help support you on? Well, I just shot the Ben Houston campaign, which was just, I think it's just coming out now. Um, oh, great. That comes with, yeah, that was really good. Other than that, we're, we've got a couple of things going on that I really can't talk about yet. Um, okay. So. Yeah, you're in a music uh, video with Caitlin Crosby. Yeah, Caitlin yep. Crosby's music video. We just did that about six months ago. That was a um, really good time. She's a, she's a good friend of the, of the family, so she called me up and asked me to jump in on it with her, so I was more than happy to. And, um, but yeah, we got a couple of TV things going on, but uh, like good. I said, it, just because they're not solidified yet, I can't really start trying to promote it, so... 
Well, we can go to the albertreed.net, right, to learn more about what's going on with you. Is that right? That's right, www.albertreed.net. Okay, well, not that I have it as my screensaver. Sure. No, 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 no. Wouldn't do that. Wouldn't do that. Um, I am just really delighted to have both of you on the show. Again, for everyone, we have had Lisa Young, the director of the Rescue Train. She's the one who's maintaining her sanity as she gets ready for the fourth annual Race for the Rescues. That's going to be October 4th, and it's going to be in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl. Go to uh, raceforderescues.org to learn more. And her group is the Rescue Train. So check that out. And also we have a very nice gentleman by the name of Albert Reed, who is an actor and professional model and a lifelong pet lover. And he's going to help this cause as well. There's tons of others, but the fact that you both took the time to get on the show, we really appreciate it. We have uh, actually a lot of listeners from all over the globe, including Singapore. That's so wild. And what's making me laugh is there's people that are listening to my show while they're working out on elliptical machines. I get these emails. I think there's a a lady named Marsha who has a pet sitting service in Naples. So I'm giving a shout out, Marsha. Just stay on that elliptical machine. Don't fall off while you hear your name being mentioned. But um, So I'm having a little fun while people are getting fit. I think that's not a bad deal, is it? Great. No, (laughs) no. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Albert. And uh, for being on the show. And uh, we really do appreciate what you're doing for pets everywhere. We appreciate you. And thank you. We're so grateful that you gave us this help. Thank thank you for having us. Good work. Yeah. All right. And I also at this time want to thank my cool producer, Mark Winter. He is the awesome magic man behind this show each and every week. And I, of course, want to thank you for tuning in each week. If you have any ideas for shows or want to send me a line and tell me what kind of fitness machine you're working on while you're listening to my show, you can just send it to Arden at ArdenMoore.com. So until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words for all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat only on PetLifeRadio.com.